I study the notepad in front of me. I used to come to the Friday meetings with dozens of excitedly scribbled pitches, ideas for stories about unfamiliar festivals in other countries, locally famous restaurants with colloquial deep-fried desserts, natural phenomena on particular beaches in South America, up-and-coming vineyards in New Zealand, or new trends among the thrill-seeking set and modes of deep relaxation for the spa crowd— I used to write these notes in a kind of panic, like every experience I hoped to someday have was a living thing growing in my body, stretching branches out to push on my insides, demanding to break out of me. I'd spend three days before pitch meetings in something of a sweaty Google trance, scrolling through image after image of places I'd never been, a feeling something like hunger growling in my gut. Today, however, I spent ten minutes writing down the names of countries. Countries, not even cities. Swapna is looking at me, waiting for me to pitch my next big summer feature for next year, and I'm staring at the word Brazil. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world. Brazil is 5.6% of the Earth's mass. You cannot write a short, snappy piece about vacationing in Brazil. You have to at least choose a specific region. I flip the page in my notebook, pretending to study the next one. It's blank. When my co-worker Garrett leans toward me as if to read over my shoulder, I snap it closed. St. Petersburg, I say. Swapna arches an eyebrow, paces along the head of the table. We did St. Petersburg in our summer issue three years ago. The White Knight celebration, remember? Amsterdam? Garrett throws out next to me. Amsterdam's a spring city. Swapna says, vaguely annoyed. You're not going to feature Amsterdam and not include the tulips. I once heard she's been to upwards of 75 countries, and many of those twice. She pauses, holding her phone in one hand and tapping it against her other palm as she thinks. Besides, Amsterdam is so... trendy. It is Swapna's closely held belief that to be on trend is to be already late to that trend. If she senses the zeitgeist warming to the idea of Torun Poland, then Torun's off the docket for the next ten years. There's a literal list push-pinned into the wall by the cubicles. Torun is not on this list. Of places R&R will not cover. Each entry is in her handwriting and dated, and there's something of an underground betting pool on when a city will be freed from the list— there's never so much quiet excitement in the office as those mornings when Swapna marches in, designer laptop bag on her arm, and strides up to the list with a pen already out, ready to cross off one of these banned cities. Everyone watches with bated breath, wondering which city she's rescuing from R&R &R obscurity, and once she's safely in her office, door shut, Whoever's closest to the list will run up to it, read the scratched-out entry, and turn to whisper the name of the city to everyone in editorial. There's usually silent celebration. When Paris was relinquished from the list last fall, someone broke out champagne, and Garrett pulled a red beret out of a drawer in his desk, where he'd apparently been hiding it for just such an occasion. He wore it all day, jerking it off his head every time we heard the click and whine of Swapna's door. He thought he'd gotten away with it, too, until she paused beside his desk on her way out for the night and said, Au revoir, Garrett. His face had gone as bright as the beret, and though I didn't think Swapna had meant it to be anything but funny, he'd never quite recovered his confidence since then. Having Amsterdam declared trendy has his cheeks flushing past beret red straight to beet purple. Someone else throws out Cozumel. And then there's a vote for Las Vegas, which Swapna briefly considers. Vegas could be fun. She looks right to me. Poppy, don't you think Vegas could be fun? It could definitely be fun, I agree. Santorini, Garrett says in the voice of a cartoon mouse. Santorini is lovely, of course, Swapna says, and Garrett heaves an audible sigh of relief. But we want something inspired. She looks at me again, pointedly. I know why. She wants me to write the big feature, because that's what I came here to do. My stomach twists. I'll keep brainstorming and work something up to pitch you on Monday, I suggest. <laughs>